Hi, welcome back. Sorry it's been so long. I guess you could call it YouTube burnout or whatever you want to say, but I'm doing this vlog to catch you up on the last six, seven months and what's coming up, what's been going on. A lot of you have been following along on Instagram, so click in the link below and get me on Instagram for daily stories about everything that happens as it happens. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what's happening this year and a couple of the events that I'm going to right now. This May, early in May, May 2nd, I'm going to Maker Central in Birmingham, England. I will be there. A lot of other YouTubers will be there. If you're interested in coming to see me, hang out. Hang out in the lobby of the hotel. We do a lot of hanging out, a lot of talking and hanging and exchanging ideas. It's a great place to be and a lot of cool people will be there. A lot of the European makers will be there, of course, and a lot of the American makers will be there. So if this is something you've been wanting to do, I encourage you to come to Maker Central. And I will, of course, be at Workbench Con. I'm going to be doing the keynote speech. I have an interesting idea developing. If you listen to the Making It podcast, you, you might have heard me mention what I might be talking about. If you are interested in getting into the social media life, Workbench Con is a great place to go. There's a lot of classes, a lot of discussion, a lot of just FaceTime with a lot of us giving advice on how to become involved in the social media industry and you know the maker industry, if that's what you want to do. So I highly encourage you to come to WorkbenchCon. That's in Atlanta, February, the end of February, uh, 20th to 22nd. Links in the bottom. Another great event coming up is Maker Summer School. That takes place in Cleveland, June 11th to June 14th. There's going to be a lot of cool people there. There's going to be a lot of classrooms. So in the actions, it's going to take place actually in a school. So there'll be a lot of classrooms for different things to take place. All types of disciplines will be taught there. So follow Maker Summer School on Instagram for up-to-the-minute updates about who's going to be there. Big plans for keynote speaker. I'm not sure if they're going to land this person, but if they do, it's going to be a lot of fun. So follow Maker Summer School and... Try and make it there. Makers Camp. If you did not make it to Makers Camp this past October, you missed out on a wonderful good time that takes place right in this town of East Durham, New York. Follow the Catskill Mountain Maker Camp for information leading up to the October event. It's going to be a killer time. Don't miss out on a big piece of property and there's no rules and you can do whatever you want. It's, it's fantastic. Held at the Blackthorn Resort, October 11th to the 14th, 2020. I'd like to thank Ask This Old House and the crew for having me on again. In this segment, I teach Tom Silva how to weld. He already knew how to stick weld. He said he learned it in high school many years ago. Gave him a couple of quick instructions on how to use the MIG welder, and he took to it immediately. His second weld was as good as any of my welds. And I think that's what happens if you're somebody that just makes things your whole life. You can be shown a new discipline and you adapt everything that went into all your formal learning just goes right into that new discipline and you pick it up very quickly. So thank you to Ask This Old House and the team there. Go find it. It's on your local listings, Ask This Old House. And then also they always post it on YouTube. So you can find it on YouTube. Thank you. David, do you know where the socket set is? No, what do you need to do? Take the plug out. So a couple of new adventures I'm getting into. I'm going to talk about the Makerware line in a few minutes. These tables. I'm working on these tables here at the shop. I ordered enough material to make 10 tables and I'm making them and I'm just going to offer them for sale on the website. Once these are ready and available, there will be a video which shows a little bit of the production and, and how I customize each one of the tables. Another business venture, we'll see where it goes, but it's something I've been talking about for a long time. We actually began the table business. Look for them on my website coming up soon. Is 
the scissor. This still needs to be hardened and sharpened, but I'm very proud of this accomplishment. This is something I've been wanting to work on for a long time. Like I say all the time, as soon as I'm done with these, I'll probably start another pair right away just to improve my learning, which is important. Make something like five times before you consider yourself a maker of that thing or consider yourself learned in that object. You guys see my Winchester 1873? There's always a big controversy on what you can call a restoration. It didn't work, now it works. So call that what you want. Everybody gets mad when I dry fire this, but it's 140 years old. I'm sure I'm not the first person to dry fire it. And I will certainly not be the next person to leave it in the rain for 50 years. If you see the condition that this thing was in, and like I said, now it works. Restoration, I don't know. What do you call it? Put it in the comments below. You see a couple of videos back, I made this book, which I've actually been using quite a bit. It's full of notes. I've been keeping a lot of new ideas in here. And I made a second book, which I gave to my friend Tracy. I made a third book, a fourth, and a fifth. If you want to get good at anything, you got to just keep jumping into it and trying it and trying it. Each time you will improve a little bit more. And I'm making these. I don't know. Everybody wants to buy them from me on the website. They take a tremendous amount of work. I don't know if I'm going to sell them. Maybe I'll eBay them one at a time. See what happens. But really right now for me, the extraction of the learning is the most important part. Learning by experience. I can't emphasize that enough. Stop reading books. Just jump in and start making books. I've been working with Weaver Leather. If you guys don't know Weaver Leather, go check them out. Every other month I will be putting a video up on their channel of me experimenting with leather. These books wouldn't have happened if I didn't start that relationship with Weaver Leather. In fact, my next video is gonna be something similar to this, but not in a book. But I'm gonna use the same technique to impress. So thank you to Weaver Leather. Go follow Weaver Leather for some of the videos I'll be posting on their channel. They're a great resource. So I wanna thank them for giving me a chance and inspiring me. They've inspired me to, to do more stuff and add more handmade items to my website. And I talked about all how that inspired me on the podcast getting into the uh, end of the year. So I talk more about it there at the Making a Podcast and the Fits All Podcast. So thank you, Weaver. In new tools, I got a lot of new tools. The, the few that I can actually remember that I acquired in the time we haven't spoke, this new windmill press. It's a Heidelberg windmill press. Thank you to the Sam Fox School over in Washington University in Missouri. They donated this machine to my shop. It's incredible. Thank you guys. A fan, now a friend, wrote to me and asked me if I wanted to buy this stroke sander, and I immediately said yes. And now I have a stroke sander. It's come in great on these tables and some of the other few things I built in the last six months. I got it a while ago, and it is great. I just love having a stroke sander. It's in a great spot. It's kind of on its own in this room. So all the dust and everything created stays in that room, and we have a vacuum attached to it too. My new do-all bandsaw, which is incredible, and it was a big part of me making these scissors. When the video comes out, you'll see that. The scissors, in fact, were, were inspired by the bandsaw. I got the bandsaw, I said, what can I cut up? What was the first thing I want to cut up? And I cut up some spring steel on the bandsaw. The bandsaw is just a dream come true, something I've always wanted. Got it used on Craigslist, and it is gonna be with me for the rest of my life, no doubt. This big, giant, new American bandsaw I picked up, I used it, uh, I got it when I did my trip to Louisville, when I did the pizza oven with the guys at First Build. They encouraged me to bid on it, and I can't thank the guys at First Build enough for packing it up and shipping it up here. I owe those guys a huge debt of gratitude taking care of that for me. I was really nervous about that. Guys, Randy, the team, everybody there. Austin, thank you, thank you, thank you. And last but not least, my new laser, which 
kicks ass. This laser is unbelievable. If you guys follow me on making it a couple of years ago on the podcast, I talked about in the beginning of the podcast, like, what are your goals and aspirations? Five years ago, I said, I want a laser. And I'm working with full spectrum laser and I have this laser now in-house. This thing is just a dream come true. There's just so many things you could do with a laser that you can't do without a laser. And so I'm so grateful to have this in, in my shop. So thank you, full spectrum. Many of you know, if you listen to the podcast, that I bought this racetrack. This is a racetrack, mini golf, and ice cream shop that went out of business here in town, and I wanted the property. So I knew the family, and they were kind enough to work out a deal with me that worked for all of us, and I now own this piece of property with a racetrack on it, and a 50 by 50 foot Morton building, and a couple of small outbuildings. And the long-term plan is to potentially build a building like this on it, like a big commercial building. But in the meantime, I'm gonna use this smaller shop as my antique printing press museum, and potentially all my own personal stuff that I've made over the last nine years will be added in there, all the stuff I made on YouTube. So it'll be sort of a memorabilia spot and a printing press shop. And that printing press shop will be opened up to whomever wants to come and learn how to use the printing presses here in town or if you want to travel and come and do that, that's, uh, that is a goal. So, In the meantime, I've talked about this on the podcast too. This is a soft announcement, May 22nd. I would like to open the racetrack up to anybody that wants to make a go-kart. I'm going to be building my go-kart with the team at First Build. And we are going to make plans. We're going to make an interesting go-kart. But the guys at First Build in Louisville and I are going to design and build this go-kart together that we will debut May 22nd. If anybody wants to build a go-kart, make a YouTube movie of it. Bring it here. Whoever makes the fastest time will win some trophy that we make. Maybe we'll get some donated prizes at the moment. There's no sponsors. It's just me opening up the racetrack to anybody that wants to come and use it for that day. And like I said, we'll, we'll get a, 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 time, a, a time judge. And whoever does the fastest time, you will win the trophy, which we'll probably make out of old go-kart parts. It's really just more of a bragging rights type of thing. And I'm really looking forward to doing that. So May 22nd, the Blackthorn Resort that holds the Catskill Maker Camp will have a special rate for that weekend. So if you come, it's just two miles down the road from the racetrack. There'll be more details about that coming up. A lot of you know that I was lucky enough to hang out with Eric and Andrew from the Fits All podcast to uh, become two of my closest buddies. We had a ball. We hung out here in New York, did a, a weekend uh, getaway down into Long Island where we did a lot of blacksmithing uh, at, a, at a, an event that took place down in Long Island. And a lot of the, the bros hung out. Chris Cash, a lot of guys came. We had a really good time. These are just some of the fun moments hanging out with these guys from the summer, from, from here in New York to to the good of the land fest, uh, all the way up to, to Andrew's shop, which we hung out for a few days. So enjoy some wacky moments with the Fitzall crew. We're gonna show you how it's not a good idea to have, sorry, I just swallowed a gnat. <laughs> okay, you could use this to frame a house tomorrow. They're fucking dysentery. blackberries. What do you mean dysentery? 
This is like, have you I gone outside? It's okay. If you die, you I'll die this. with you. You fucking die. You've never tasted a berry so exquisite. Mm -hmm. Only the best berries grow fresh within fresh the rust. Right within the rust. Oh, it's the best way. Glyphosate? You need a metal detector is what you need. Call this Why? It would go off the whole time, Jim. That's the joke. Therein lies the comedy. <laughs> <laughs> real high level comedy. Did y'all hear Jimmy say something about a metal detector? God damn. Look at that. You know you want that. Oh. You got it choked or what? It's choked up. Um, you probably flooded it. Yes, Boy, that them. thing runs like a Jim Danny, don't it? It's, that was probably super modern whenever they did it, too. <laughs> what about this little mini dozer? Is it a clean track? I edited that, yeah. These were uh, these were my first pair of jeans that I made like this. I was experimenting with a sewing machine, and I had this is camel leather. So I was told by the garment guy on Avenue A. So I want to show you guys my pants. You can see my pants here. My pockets, all my pants and all my pockets. These are the pants I've been making for many, many years. There's been a lot going on behind the scenes. You've seen a lot of social media on it between me and, and Christine on her Instagram. Um, her Instagram link is below. Uh, here's a little bit of a story behind the scenes of how this happened. I will announce on the website exactly when the window of opportunity to buy will happen. It's a lot of preparation leading up to taking that deep breath and saying, okay, now they're for sale. There's a lot of work going on behind the scenes and a lot of it's on Christine's shoulders. So I want to thank her publicly for, for, for doing what she's doing. She's exhaustive amount of work that goes on behind the scenes. There's so much detail, which is the reason I haven't done it for so long. And then when I met Christine and she, she promised that she would be the driving force behind the scenes and all the detail oriented aspects of making clothes. And uh, it's all going to be made locally in, in uh, America and New York. As soon as we, we open the sales, I will let everybody know. It will be on the website. Go to the website now and sign up for the waiting list. And as soon as it's announced, that waiting list will be blasted to everybody. I put these on these pants in probably 2001, 2002. And I was just experimenting. And then eventually I ended up going to, where's this other pair? I ended up going to this where it's one pocket with a couple of other pockets on top of it. This is like nine, this is 2003 or four. And then I just kind of eventually just went to the full on front. Yeah, spread those out, I'll show you. So this is a pair, I think Taylor made this pair for me. Where we kind of, we, we were just kind of getting a little stylized instead of going up, which I ultimately went back to the going all the way up. And then cutting it around the zipper fly. This is, this is actually the first pair I made like this. And what's funny is if you notice, I didn't really know how to split a seam, so I just cut the back of the leg wide open, <laughs> sewed them in, and then sewed the legs back shut. So this is just some suede I bought at a local leather shop on Avenue A. And so here we are. This is 10 years ago? Hi, I'm Christine Rucci, a.k.a. Godmother, NYC, Godmother of Denim, and uh, yeah, I make jeans. How long have you been making jeans? Ah, uh, 38 years. And you're only 40 years old, isn't it? <laughs> yes, I came out the womb and started sewing. <laughs> Child labor. Ralph Lauren, Calvin Klein, Donna Karen, Tommy Hilfiger, Diesel, you name it. And I now the rest of them. When you first came to me, did you know that I was doing this type of thing on my jeans? No. You had no idea? I had no idea. I'll be honest, it's like when I went to one of your mallet making workshops and uh, then one of your print things, I just looking saying, that guy should have his own jeans line. Like if he seems like a jeans guy, which is sort of organic. I think on a whim, I just called you and I said, I'm going to do decks. I'm going to send you something. And if you like it, you should hire me. And that's pretty much been it. You know, one of the things like I've always been the proponent of Made in America and bringing back the tradition of American-made products. So when we started to talk about collaborating about this project, one of the things was that we would try to make a transparent supply chain, um, everything from knowing where the cotton grew, who's weaving it, 
the hardware is all recycled and sustainable and one of the things is we don't washing the jeans which is going to save a lot of water because like in the old days they didn't have pre-washed jeans and one of the things is like I said you should grow a jean and grow a pair. Collaborating with Jimmy we were able to like look at people that make and the details that they like and make sure that everything on the jean had a form function as well as a fashionable look to it. All of the hardware is recycled brass die cast and then one of the things that's really cool is the hidden ice pick pocket right here and then we have the double coin pockets which again for more pocket space one of the other things we did was we didn't use traditional pocket bags we used self denim which is sturdier more durable and you don't get the dreaded pocket pull out when you pull your hands out of your pocket reinforced belt loops that are sewn up into the waistband and double needle felled and clean finish all the seams so pretty much the inside of the jean busted out seams felled in seams so you get more durability so the seams are tighter and they're stitched together and then about the denim is made by cone denim off original vintage specs one of the oldest products that they've been weaving for almost a hundred years and it's a pure indigo blend we also are using YKK American made zippers and threads from A&E so everything in this jean has been sourced ethically sustainably and with trying to maintain some traditional details of original workwear or as we like to call it the rest and make wear well, I was born in Paris, alligator shoes. Mama hit the buckets when my dad threw the coop. I was to seven children, it's Jack up on the hill. That's my face on the $3 bill. I got two left feet, three gold teeth. I'm well known to the chief of police, cause I'm a man about the town. Man about the town, I'm a man about the town. Man about the town. When I hit the town, man, I beat like a brand new mill. Over this past uh, April to October, we held about eight or nine classes in blacksmithing, welding, woodworking, a bunch of stuff. It was a lot of fun. It was great. It was a little stressful, I'm not going to lie, having a bunch of people at the house every few weeks with me and Taylor doing all the behind the scenes. We haven't made the new schedule yet. We will make the new schedule soon, and there will be less classes than we did last year because we wanted to test the waters and it takes a lot a lot of behind the scenes work people and uh and energy so uh we, we just got to think about how we're going to do it going into the new year we're definitely going to do it we're just not going to do as many so we'll announce the schedule soon Bang, got the education on employment history but at the bowling alley brother i'm the one to be uh -huh. No exaggeration, I'm the top of the league. I want to play the perfect game every night for a week. Those are from the Canadian. See that Jason Voorhees action he's got going? Teamed up this year with the guys over at Stamp Yours, Nick and Eli. These guys have been great. I've been doing some stamps with them here and there. If you are at all interested in getting a stamp made to personalize the things you make, whether you're a blacksmith, a silversmith, a goldsmith, or a woodworker, or you need a hot stamp, or if you're a leather worker, you need a stamp, check out the guys at Stamp Yours. Here's a little segment I did with them over the summer. Here at Stamp Yours and Superior Steel Stamp, we make industrial marking products for the everyday maker. So whether you're a knife maker, a jewelry maker, leather smith, blacksmith, silversmith, anything you make, there's a way to mark it and we'll make the right tool for you um, to last for you know a very long time. We, we use high quality products and materials and you can always expect uh, the best working with us. Longer lasting pieces. Yeah. Because you guys have you guys have a, a full on industrial background doing full on industrial yeah. parts before you even started this business. Yeah, we sure do. So we use all the same industrial uh, methods, materials and processes and so you're literally getting uh, you know, a tool that's made to, to stand the test of time. You guys made stamps for like the uh, space shuttle, right? Yeah, we yeah. sure did. Yeah. I'm not sure where they are, they might be in space, but <laughs> they made it there. No, cool. Well, we're gonna make stamps for me today, so let's go take a look.
barn update is I got the big ass fans in place. I also have the floor heated. And we have architectural plans to do the second floor. We changed the concept, so it's gonna be a little bit different on the second floor than I originally planned. So we have to wait to do the second floor before I close the walls, which is the reason why I've been slow on closing up the walls. And, uh, but the big, 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 big news, because it just happened, is that the floor is heated. Mo, my buddy Mo, I'm going to link his Instagram below. You got to check out Mo, follow his Instagram. He is a, an absolute expert, perfectionist, very, very, very smart installer of boilers and designer of boiler systems. So check out my buddy Mo and follow him. Patrick did the electric work, which is, as always, impeccable. The barn's moving along, and now that it's warm in there, I'm working in there doing some laser work and doing a little bit of plasma cutting. The last couple of classes kind of disheveled the place, but we got to get it back in order. My friend Tracy Blum made this book. She wrote this book about me as a child. I'm so honored that she would want to do that. And it's kind of a true story. If you read the book, it's, it's an easy read. It's a great book. If you have young children and you like to inspire them into making things and give them something to base their early learning on, get a hold of this book. It's about me as a little kid encouraging all the kids in the neighborhood to make stuff. And like I said, it's, it actually is kind of true. So, Tracy, thank you for believing in me and, and writing this story. Uh, I'm very proud of it. Thank you. I want to thank everybody for following along and supporting me all this time. It's my eighth year anniversary here on YouTube. Thank you for supporting the maker community. Thank you for supporting me here on YouTube and everybody else that is involved in this community. It's just, it's been, it's been a, a wonderful ride and it's has no end in sight. So I'm very, very, very excited and proud to, to keep it going. So thank you. Ready? I'm threatening it. Oh! <laughs>